Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and back to Charlie the Intern's WJ build series. Uh, so when he bought his $800 WJ, it had a vibration in the front end that we knew about. So we knew it was going to need ring and pinion or carrier. We didn't really know what, but I found him a cheaper option. We went and pulled uh, WJ Dana 30. Still has a quadra drive carrier in it, 373 gears, so it's a direct match. Uh, he got lucky. It was in good shape. Uh, his $800 WJ came with new brakes, new rotors, all that fun stuff. So that'll get slapped on here. Um, but as we started tearing it down to get ready for the swap, we noticed that his spring perches are on their way out. This one's pretty rough. The other side's not too terrible. Uh, we do have product on our website to rebuild these perches. A um, little bit of welding, but not too terrible but Charlie decided he'd rather trust the Dana 30 so we're gonna show you guys how to cut off all our brackets here and install our Dana 30 over axle truss uh, which is also gonna save us some time underneath there when we do our three link long arm upgrade so we're gonna get to cutting and then I'm gonna call intern Charlie to come do all the grinding because I'm not gonna do that so let's get started so just to go over real quick before we start cutting uh, the Dana 30 over axle truss is going to replace our spring mounts, our track bar mount, our shock mounts, our bump stop pad. We're going to do away with the passenger upper control arm mount. We do have to cut off our driver's side diff mount. Um, you know, and obviously our other spring mounts. We're going to get all that out of here, get it cut down, cleaned up, and then when we do the unboxing, we'll kind of lay this on here and show you guys how it lays out, but it keeps it all factory. So you don't have to worry about having to change anything on the Jeep itself. Once you have the new truss welded onto the axle, put the axle back onto the Jeep, bolt it up, and you're good to go. So let's get cutting. So utilize what you have. You can do it with a grinder. You can do it with a sawzall and a grinder. You can do it with a torch and a grinder. I like to do the bulk of it with a torch. Try not to put too much heat into the tube. And then fine tune it with a grinder and a flappy disc. So let's get going. So when we were cutting off all of our brackets, we left our LCAs on. You can do that with this truss kit, but the factory width on the Dana 30 axles for the WJ with uh, the long arm kits, you need a spacer in there um, inside the outer portion to push your arm in. There's an option when you're purchasing your Dana 30 over axle truss to do the heavy duty lower control arm mounts. We're going to do that. We're going to have intern Charlie cut his own stuff, but this will put it at the actual width that we need for the control arm. So you can get rid of that spacer, quarter inch plate, more heavy duty. So we're going to cut these lowers and get these welded in when we're welding in the rest of the truss. So, but if you want to save money and you're okay putting that spacer in, you can cut all your other brackets off, leave your LCAs in. You're good to go. All right, so intern Charlie spent yesterday afternoon learning how to run a torch. Uh, I started cutting stuff, and then I had him, once he decided he wanted to do the lower control arm brackets, after we started. So I let him kind of go buck wild with that. So he cut off the lower control arm brackets and then finished cleaning up everything. So we're ready to start tacking our truss together. There's a lot of pieces that go with this one. Everything is slotted, so it can only fit one way. It'll come with instructions for you. So just bear with me, we'll walk you through it. So this is cleaned up, ready to go. We're gonna move to the table with all our pieces. So like I said, a lot of pieces here, but once you lay it out how it's gonna go, it's not too daunting. So we got our main top plate here. That's gonna go on our long tube side. We've got our front and rear plates for that. We've got our new coil bucket. It's gonna get welded on there track bar bracket, 
sway bar link end, lower control arm, our shock mount. This is gonna go over the top of the diff, which is why we had to cut off the factory mount. And then we've got our new mount that'll get tabbed in and welded. You can get these in rubber bushings, or if you wanna opt out and do the upper control arm flex joint, now's a great time to do that. So, and then we got our short side plate, front and rears, and coil buckets and everything else. So we're gonna start tacking this together. We'll show you step by step. Once it's all tacked on, then we'll start finish welding it. And when we're finished welding it, we're gonna kind of bounce around. Um, you'll see me take that jack out and we'll actually dip it and we're gonna rotate get the actual best shot we can at welding this. So let's uh, get the welder ready. We'll get this on there and start tacking everything together. All right, so we're gonna start with our main long plate. We're gonna set her down here. Other side of our track bar bracket. This is gonna go towards the center. Our squash plates. front plate or yeah rear plate I'm upside down so front plate will have the iron rock emblem so now this one's assembled start tacking and make sure everything's square uh, your track bar bracket you know if you have your track bar I would bolt that in there at least get the the bushing or the sleeve in there so that that gap isn't too tight. Um, leave, it loose. leave it loose. As you bolt that together, it'll tighten it up. But this only slots together, should only slot together one way. Uh, once you get it all slotted together, we're gonna start tacking it in sections and move around. So we're gonna try and prevent it from um, bowing in from the heat. So this one's ready to start tacking. We'll get that tacked together, we'll set that aside, and then we'll put our short side together, and then we'll start working on the truss. All right, so we got our long side all in. Just quick tacked everything together so there's nothing loose or moving there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the short side. Flip it over, you got your two internal gussets, two outer plates. We'll tack this one together. So we got both of our truss halves all tacked together. When we laid our large side on, um, we were making contact with the diff housing sooner than we should have been. So we kind of had a an inkling that this axle might be bent, just like my JK axle that we stuck in the LJ. So we got our pucks out, took our carrier out, put our pucks in, slid our bar in, and sure enough, it uh, was slightly bent, nothing too crazy. We are actually able to get it pulled back in with the ratchet strap, which we will leave there until we're done welding the truss all the way on. Uh, these are gonna be available. Everybody asked during my axle swap in my LJ video if we were gonna sell them. We got enough you know, questions on it, so we are gonna start launching those by the time this video hits. They should be on the website. Um, so they're gonna look just like these and they're gonna be axle specific. They'll come in a pair. Uh, you'll have the option, or I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but you should have the option to buy the tube itself or at least get the uh, dimensions of the tube so you know what to get. And then you can start checking your axles. Big reason why we want to trust these axles is they bend. So especially on a Dana 30 low pinion, just saying. <laughs> but JK axles do it. Every axle will do it. This axle, as far as we know, came out of just a daily driver WJ. Um, it was a higher mileage WJ, but stock wheels, stock suspension, stock steering, everything still bent. So we're going to try and get in the habit of checking them before we're trusting them from now on. Um, but yeah, if you want to check in the inside of the tube there, you'll actually be able to see how this gap all the way around is uniform, meaning that is true to the, the carrier bearing uh, surface. And that's what we're looking for. So we're going to start, uh, we got to make sure our top cap's going to fit, so we're going to test fit that one more time, and then we'll start tacking the truss to the axle, and then we're going to start flipping and rotating this thing around and finish welding this thing on. So let's get to it. What time is it? It's Miller time. <laughs> Yeah.
Nice. So we're tacking the truss onto the actual housing. I did burn in two points right now um, into the cast sections. We preheated the diff before welding that to try and prevent it from, from cracking. Same on the C. Um, we have a few more points we're going to try and weld onto the diff. We'll preheat those as well. Now we're using the C clamp to make sure the bottom portion of the truss is tight to the tube, tacking both ends on both sides and moving down the line once we have both sides all tacked on in place, then we'll start jumping around with our, our full stitch welds. So quick tip that I was told from one of the owners, Derek, who was the original welder for Iron Rock, he's like, if you got something out on the bench and you can flip and rotate that thing to give you the best shot and easiest way to weld it, do it, which is the nice thing about doing these trusses outside of the vehicle. You can do them in there. You're gonna do some overhead welding, which like I said, I'm not a professional welder, Sure, not a big deal for professional welders, but for me to have the best shot at a good looking weld that penetrates, I'm going to flip this thing a ton while I'm welding it together. So I'm going to spot weld a few things on this side. We're going to flip it back over, hit the other side. We'll flip it back over, hit some more on this side. So we're not starting at one end, welding all the way through, because that's how you're going to twist it up. So do a few stitch welds here, and then I'll jump over here, and then we're going to rotate it. Next, we're going to do our shock mounts. They're tabbed, same part number for left and right, so you can't mess that up. Should fit in there nice and tight. We'll throw a few tacks on and burn it in. So our two halves are now part of the axle. We're ready to put our top cap on. We welded and heat treat, or heated up the cast where we could. Tried to get as much on there as we could. It's not actually necessary with this truss, but if you're going to three-link it like I think Charlie's going to do, all your torsion is on this one point right here. So we want this section as strong as absolutely possible. So get your cap on there. You know, it's got a little bit of wiggle room, so you just want it to have the same gap front and rear, which this just resting on its own is pretty much where we want it. So we're going to tack her in and start burning it. Whew. So we just welded up the top cap for our coil spring bucket, so we'll clean that up. And then on the uh, upper control arm, there's going to be a slight bevel right here. That's going to go notched, and the bevel is going to go over the front. So we'll tack that in. And if you look, you'll see a laser etched circle here. That is going to be for your bucket, so just center it up. Um, we tried to grind as little as possible around it so we could still center it up. I'd grab this thing, but it's super hot right now. So it's just going to sit somewhere in there. Then you burn that one in, burn the other side in, weld this on, and then all we got left is our lower control arm brackets, which we'll probably have to do tomorrow. But let's keep going. All right, so we have our angle finder. We're ready to put our lower control arm on, or uh, lower control arm bracket. So we got to find the angle. So the measurement's gonna be based off of the mounting surface for the diff cover. So we zero it out here. And then we're gonna take that. On the short side of the axle, butts up against the diff housing. We're gonna put our angle finder back on here. And we are looking for 13 degrees. All right, so we got our 13 degrees. Not bad. So for our long side LCA, we're gonna measure from the inside of the C there, out seven and three eighths, and that's gonna be to that side of our bracket. And then we're gonna do our 13 degrees, check our line, tack it. That's the beautiful one.
So on the top plate here, you should have a uh, laser etched circle. Try your best not to grind that away. Set your cap right on that laser etch line. We'll tack it in. All right. All of our welding is done on the Dana 30 uh, over axle truss. I'm going to call him intern Charlie. I was informed he's been hired full time, but like Ryan from the office, he's always going to be the temp. So. <laughs> Uh, he's got some cleaning up to do. He's going to tractor paint it, I'm sure. Uh, clean out the diff, get all that put back together, get the pucks out. Um, hopefully we'll have those on the website by the time this launches. So if you're curious, if your axle's bent, check out the website, get the pucks, order the bar. Um, if you guys have any questions on the Dana Truss, um, you know, give me a call, drop a comment on the video. You can always swap out that uh, rubber bushing on the three link for one of our um, upper control arm flex joints, which I still think in turn Charlie should do, but that's up to him. This one's uh, good to go. Um, next video, I believe we're going to be installing a three link in intern Charlie's WJ with this axle once he's done painting it and getting it all put back together. So drop a comment, drop a like, let us know if there's any changes you would do on this or how you'd want to see that WJ build go. Um, again, give me a call if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching.